Hello and welcome to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. This week we've got uh, our friend, he's not a stranger to our talkback show and always very interesting. He is chiropractor Dr. Byron Cragen. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's more than a pleasure. So um, we'll just uh, maybe start off with, if people do not really know about uh, what a chiropractor does, maybe you might like to start off with that first. Well, they, they do what we call physical medicine. They work on the spinal column to correct any imbalances because the spinal column has all the nervous system and it controls every organ of our body. So it's, it's important to the spinal cord is uh, spinal column is properly aligned because you might have a circulatory problem from a neck problem you might be affecting something in the throat but mostly chiropractors they, they deal with nutrition and basically everything in the form of natural medicine of course we don't do drugs we don't do surgery we refer to the medical community for that and, and that they do what they do but I'm into natural medicine and trying to tell people about it. And chiropractors, they're educated, uh, like uh, any medical doctor, for instance, you know, we all get, I got a four-year degree in zoology and did my postgraduate work in anatomy and biochemistry as a bio biology graduate student. But Okay, so when you say anatomy, I think that's uh, really interesting because uh, it's just, uh, what is it that you study, nerves and the spinal cord, is yeah, that the, right? The whole, the whole body. Yeah, but yeah. without obviously our skin yeah. and flesh and all yeah. that, it's well, inside. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's everything. You know, microscopic anatomy is called histology. And, mm. uh, I uh, actually, I went to, I got a, when I went to chiropractic school, I got a scholarship for, academic scholarship for teaching anatomy lab, dissection labs, because that was my deal in college, university was anatomy. Mm -hmm. So I was good enough at it that the professor said, well, you help me out. So I got a nice deal and I, so I taught uh, human anatomy dissection labs and histology labs, which is microscopic anatomy. Okay. Because that was my forte. That was what I, I was qualified to do. So it was kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, you obviously were really interested in it. I mean, it's yeah. amazing, the body. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, the functions of our body, the different yeah. parts, and also as a chiropractor, very interesting to know what you yeah. learned. So my, my focus was uh, head and neck, because I'll tell you later on in the story. So that's why I, I got uh, that opportunity to teach. But uh, most of the things I'm going to talk about aren't well known in the world because the the people that do control the media they're, they're the pharmaceutical investment business they're these big power people they don't want us to be healthy it, they're a disease management business diseases they want more diseases so if you have a cure for a disease well that's probably not going to happen I'll talk about that a little bit later so that the community understands the that if you don't want somebody to know something, don't let them read about it. Don't let them hear about it. So mm. we, we'll, someday we'll have a hi history lesson on how that all happened with Rockefeller Foundation and all that stuff. But that's another story. I don't want to get sidetracked on that. But I'd like to talk about a, a great uh, somebody that should have got a Nobel Prize, actually. And he was, uh, was a... Uh, he was the biochemistry professor at uh, Humboldt State University in Northern California. And as a biochemistry, in biochemistry, that's the highest level of chemistry. In order to get, be a biochemistry graduate student, you have to take a year of math, year of calculus, physics, uh, year of physics, year of inorganic chemistry, year of organic chemistry. And when you're in the chemistry, biochemistry series, you're, kinda, you're invited to chemistry department's uh, parties. And, and at one of these parties, my organic chemistry teacher came up to me, who was a, the valedictorian from Harvard, okay? Wow. And he says, Byron, you know, I want you to know something about Dr. Wallace. He would never tell anybody. But he was at Caltech in the 50s. And he was working with Watson and Crick in the UK. They were working on breaking the DNA code, okay? Yes. And Dr. Wallace... Worked for hours, days, weeks. He broke the code. Now, Caltech's one of the top universities in the world, okay? There's no question that. He broke the code, and he sent all his information to Watson and Crick. 
immediately. He's very happy to do it. And Watson and Crick published two months later without him. Oh, dear. Yeah, completely broke the guy. Oh, man. You know, he says, that's it for me, research. He didn't mention his name. He's the one who should have received a Nobel Prize. Oh. He left and became the uh, head of the biochemistry department at Humboldt State University. Oh dear. So why do you think that they did that? that that's just Greed. terrible. Greed. Greed, eh? Yeah. Mm. And he's, he's the one that, ha he, six students he hand-tutored for a year series in biochemistry. He knew these kids, and I was one of them, you know. And, oh, okay. And it gets back to my story <laughs> that I'll include on headaches, because mm. I had an injury I'll tell you about later. Yes. We, that's really interesting. But too. Uh, you know, I'm sitting there staring at my final, mm -hmm. and I, I can't read it because I've been having these massive headaches for six months, and it got so bad that I couldn't even study. And he says, "What do you, Byron? You, did you stay up all night again studying? Typical, mm -hmm. be a crazy student." And he goes, "I said, no, I just have these massive headaches." He says, "Go ahead and take your time." Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I finished it in four hours or so. I, I was. That was quite a challenge. So there you go. There's uh, uh, plagiarism at such a core level of the mo one of the most important events and discoveries in the history. Mm. And nobody found out. Well, I'm letting the world know right here. I don't care where it goes. That's the truth. Mm. And the, the next one, the really important story, is one on Dr. Matthias Raff. Now, Matthias Raff is this very famous cardiologist. Well, he was in Germany doing research with his uh, colleagues and in the United States. He discovered the cause for heart disease. Oh, okay. Now, and since he discovered it, he has proven it clinically and scientifically in every way that is possible to show what the cause of heart disease is. He should have gotten the Nobel Prize for it. Mm. Why do you think he didn't get a Nobel Prize for that? Think about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. If the Nobel Prize was given to him, that's the end of heart disease. And that's not a light little subject to say. Mm. How, who would possibly keep that away from us, the public, the doctors, everybody? The pharmaceutical investment business, that's who. They don't care about it. They want heart disease. They make a trillion dollars a year off of it. Yeah. And with a patent drugs. And, and if the Nobel Prize was given to him, the whole world would know that there's a cure for heart disease. Ouch. And it doesn't stop there. He followed this research into cancer, and he published this stuff. He found that by just using a few micronutrients, natural things, lysine, proline, um, some green tea extract, all found in the natural. Yeah, natural vitamin C that mm -hmm. he could block every single form of cancer from metastasizing. And 90% of death from cancer comes from metastasis. That's the spread of cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is worthy of a Nobel Prize, too. You know, what would, do, what would the world do if they had all this information? Well, I'm, I'm going to show you oh, yeah, where you can name. go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just go to Dr. Rath Health Foundation, and there is a plethora. Mm. Of information that you can get. Oh, thank you for that. I mean, and, we can Google that because this is this is we call it cellular medicine. Mm. Cellular medicine versus conventional medicine. Conventional okay. medicine treats the symptoms. Okay, we we'll have to come back to that. Okay. The cellular okay. medicine. Excuse yeah. me, Doctor Byron, on Speak Your Mind Gold FM. Only the classic hits. <laughs> Speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're talking to chiropractor Dr. Byron Cragen, who is uh, sharing very enlightening stuff with us. Now, we spoke uh, about uh, the cellular medicine that you were talking about, uh, how yeah, uh, yeah. we could cure, I mean, you know, nip things in the bud. Well, cellular medicine versus conventional medicine. Conventional medicine treats the symptoms at an organ level. And they're just symptomatic treatments. They're not going for the cause. Cellular medicine goes to the root cause, which is a cellular level. And when a cell, any cell of the body doesn't have the proper micronutrients, 
it starts to malfunction. And then the, the, that's the problem. Not the organ itself, it's the cells that make up all the organs. Mm -hmm. So you have the micronutrients would be um, minerals, amino acids, uh, vitamins, minerals, and uh, bi phytobiologicals, uh, pro yeah. plant products, right? Right. And these are the, the things, the vitamins that supply the cells the ability to utilize and, and function. function. Properly, yeah. Whereas, uh, and when you have a micronutrient deficiency, let's say, let's go to oxygen. If you're without enough oxygen, you're going to pass out. Mm. If you don't have enough water, you're going to become thirsty. If you don't have enough macronutrients, which are protein, fat, and carbohydrates, you're going to get hungry. But when it comes to micronutrients, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals, and phytobiologicals, you don't get any symptoms. The symptom is, later on, it, the symptom is the disease. That's the disease. You, conventional medicine treats the organ disease effectively, but you have to treat it at its cause, cause level. So, you know, uh, vitamin C is a perfect example. They used to think it was some kind of disease that, you know, that people bleed to death, their teeth fall out, blah, 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 you know. It's, and they find out it's because of a lack of vitamin C. And if you don't have any vitamin C in your food for three months, you're going to die. That's pretty serious symptom, huh? Wow. Really why serious. are you going to die? Because your whole connective tissue is glued together with vitamin C, and when you don't have it, it starts to fall apart. Your teeth fall out, you know, and your arteries crack, and you bleed to death. And there's, there's no coming back from that. That's some and knowledge, the, yes. And, and there's some great stories about the history of uh, vitamin C. Mm -hmm. it, 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 there's uh, Cartier, I think, some French sailor, he was stuck in the St. Lawrence River, I believe it was, in the United States in the wintertime, and his whole crew's dying of scurvy. They were just, teeth were falling out, they were dying. 50% of his crew was dead, and the American Indians found him. And they treated them with, with uh, pine needles and bark and stuff like that. They all recovered. Mm. He went back to France and told them about it. They thought he was crazy, all those silly savages, they couldn't know anything, so they knew the cure for that. And it took another 200 years, and maybe they estimated 2 million sailors died of vitamin scurvy. Jeez, and the sailors. I yeah, mean, because they couldn't get any vitamin C yeah, on board. No fresh food. Yeah, no fresh food. Yeah, and then some guy discovered it, and it took him, the British government 40 more years to it, say, okay, we're, everybody's... Got to take lime, limeys, you know, take lime and stuff. And for well, the when you go yeah, on the yeah, ship, yeah. so mm. so that was that was a, a micronutrient. But okay. we're not supposed to know that. Look at Dr. <laughs> Rath. Mm. Discovered that the cause for heart disease was the micronutrient deficiency, vitamin C. What do you? How can you keep this knowledge from the planet? You got to have total mm. control over the the media. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, sometimes, uh, Dr. Cregan, it's uh, something very simple that can be the cure. Oh, yeah. And then people oversee this. Oh, man, it, it, it's, it's exciting for, I think, for all of us to learn these little things. Mm. It's been an exciting journey for me to, because I've been doing research for 30 years, and this is, this is my deal. I had some guy from England when we were in chiropractic school. He was lecturing to us, and he says, we know, we... we I've been dealing with heroin addicts in, the, in uh, England, mm. and we've been getting massive doses, 40, 50 grams of vitamin C a day, mm. and they don't go through withdrawal. Seriously? Yeah. And I said, well, they, the government must have jumped on that. She said, no, they, were, they, they didn't want it at all because they had such a program of all these people being employed that it, it would disrupt the status quo. Right. And, and then they, they had the nerve, I'm not going to say the B word, mm. they, they had the nerve to say, well, now they'll be addicted to vitamin C. I'm serious. Oh, no. So, 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 so vitamin C flies, you know, 30 years ago I'm, I'm seeing this stuff. But now <laughs> I know a little bit more about vitamin C. Ridiculous. 
Well, so I mean, if you look in the corner there, I've got a, a bottle of water with lemon in it. So okay, well, I must be doing the right <laughs> thing, aren't I, doctor? Well, there's not much vitamin C in lemon, <laughs> but it is natural, so it's, it's okay. Mm. Okay. <coughs> so what do we talk about next? How, how about some... some okay, uh, well, what about the experience that you had? I mean, I mean you became a oh, chiropractor, yeah. remember? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's an inspirational story, so you can tell that one. Well, let, let me... Talk about a couple other cases that happened in this country. Okay, we'll start off with that first. And then. I was out at Wakaya, uh, stayed there for a couple of months, and my friends, Rob and Linda Miller, who basically are responsible for Wakaya being a, what it is, and they brought a, a, the, one of their employees had, had a daughter that had severe headaches. The, the fellow told me, he says, yeah, my daughter fell out of the back of the truck and hit her head, knocked her out, and she came to, they took her to the hospital. They couldn't find anything, just a big lump. And, and from that point on, she started having headaches, and they'd give her medication, but it wouldn't seem to work. Mm. And so they, she never attended school because she had headaches all the time. She couldn't sleep at night. There's no way that she could sleep. She'd wake up 20 times a night because her head hurt all the time. Mm. And uh, she had bad vision, who knows what else. I. But uh, could you help her? He says, I don't know. Let's bring her in. So they brought her in, and I examined her, and I examined her neck, and I she, her neck was just really badly out of alignment. But how could you, how could you tell? Yeah, you can feel. You feel. You, that's you, how you do oh, it. Oh, you then? can feel everything. Chiropractors are trained to feel the spine like oh, you can't okay. believe. You know, we can you just move it, and we, you know. Wow. It's like playing a piano in dark. You know, you, you know how to play the piano. You know what everything that's right. there, yeah. And you can test by touching places if it hurts and all that stuff. Okay, I'm really sorry. We'll have to get yeah. back to what we're talking about soon. Stay with us on Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. And uh, Louise with you. And uh, I've got uh, Dr. Byron Cragen, who is a specialist in his field. He's a chiropractor. And uh, we were just talking about uh, how you fixed up a little girl on Wakaya Island. So you can continue from there, doctor. Okay, so the father brought the daughter in. Uh, she's 12 years old, can't go to school. Can't sleep, can't study. Poor little thing, you know, and she's in pain all the time and can't sleep. And I palpated her neck, and it's just so badly misaligned. It, uh, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to realign her spine. Mm. And this is, this is my expertise is neck function oh. for lots of reasons I, I can get into. But chiropractors in general, are, that's what the whole spine is, their job. They're the specialist. Well... Mm. I set her up, and I did what we call a chiropractic adjustment to realign her spine. Mm. And that uh, I think the father must have passed out with the sound because oh. we're talking about a major movement of the spine that's been stuck out of place for six years. Oh, my goodness. And I did everything in the neck, and, and the little girl started, she started looking like she was going to fall asleep standing up, sitting down, I mean. Yeah. And I said, get your daughter home, put her to bed. Well, I saw the, the father about five days later, and he says, you, you won't believe what happened to my daughter. She slept for 36 hours straight. <laughs> 36 hours straight. She says, I couldn't believe it. I was, I was timing her. And when she woke up, she, I noticed she was on the porch, and she's looking out at the ocean. She says, Dad, I can see all the islands for the first time since she fell out of the truck. Amazing. Okay. Mm. The, the the next story is one, another one in Fiji, and that was when I just opened up at the Sheraton at dinner. I had, I was there at room two hundred one. I was had my office there, and and the general manager at the time, Frank Vieira, called me and he says, uh, Doctor Cragen, uh, I got a call from the Asaw Iron Lodge. They said that they had a a family, a young boy, twelve years old, and his mother and father. Uh, just arrived from England, and the the wife picked up a suitcase and hurt her back, and she can't get off the floor. She's laying on the floor. She's in total pain. She can't move, and she they hurt, she didn't know what to do. She's in the South Pacific. She doesn't know anybody here and doesn't trust 
anything as far as health goes. And, but she mm -hmm. found out that there was a, an American chiropractor at the Sheraton. Mm -hmm. So he said, do you think you could help her? And I says, yeah, well, I'll do, do my best. And this is at a time when they had, had the helipad there. So they had a medevacker out, put her on a stretcher, and they came in and dropped down. And Frank, uh, the manager, says, this is, this is not a hospital. We really can't have people going into rooms with stretchers, okay? This is not what I had you here for. It's for other things. And, and he, he said, that's no problem. We put her in the back of a station wagon truck and took her into a, had a little, another office there. And uh, the three of us got her on the table because she, she couldn't, you know, she was so much pain. She, it was real hard to get her on the table. And I'm examining her, trying to figure out what's going on. And while I'm sitting there, right across from me, here's the little boy, 12-year-old. And yeah, this probably the most important fact point here is that that was the age of my son. Oh, okay? okay yes. And this kid sitting there, he looked at me, and he started bobbing his head like, like this. And then his eyes rolled back in his head, and you could see the whites of his eyes, and he's blinking like that. And I go, what's going on with your son? He says, oh, he's having another one of his migraine headache ear attacks. And I says, wait a second, what are you talking about? Mm. He says, oh, yeah, we had to medicate him to get him down here. This is our, my 40th birthday, and we're celebrating together down here in Fiji. Mm. Paradise for them, you know. And so he... She said, he's been having these problems since he was a child. And I said, how, what do you mean? She says, yeah, he's been in the hospital when he was about a year and a half old. I said, wait a second, this started happening when he was a child. Did you have a difficult delivery? And she says, yeah, we had a forceps delivery. And this started when he was about 12 months, 16 months old. She says, yeah, how did you know? She says, well, he damaged his neck, obviously. And, his, and I went and fell there. It's just completely distorted, you know. And I said, what happened is that when he was crawling, he didn't have any pressure on it. But as soon as he started sitting up and trying to stand up, he's trying to balance this heavy object on this damaged, tiny little neck. Mm. And it would compress it, and he would have headaches, and they'd have him in the hospital on an IV drip at least once a month, sometimes more frequently. Because the kid never slept, ever, all night, ever. Never had a peaceful sleep. Never. He'd go down the hallway crawling with his head, and they'd take him to the oh. hospital, and you know, and he'd have infections. Thirteen surgeries on his ear and mastoid bone, trying to relieve pressure. They didn't know what to do. I says, "Well, did you take him to a chiropractor?" I says, "Oh yeah, but they didn't seem to know what to do." And he, twenty, thirty, fifty doctors—I don't know—I said, "It's probably not so much that they might not have wanted to." I was taught by a famous old Swiss doctor. Dr. Henri Neer, mm -hmm. he says, you're going to run into this one of these days, and this is how you do it. So he taught me the special maneuver, and I had it right in my face. But am I going to do this? No, this is, most, how, how you felt, this is the yeah. most dangerous procedure I can possibly imagine. Mm. Yeah, and, and I'm looking at... A lot of at, thoughts going through your mind at the yeah, time, right? Yeah, oh, man, I'm going, <laughs> here I am in the South Pacific. I, I, has, I said to him, I, listen, I have no backup here. But I'm willing to help him because he wants me to help him. Because when you know these situations, you know uh, he's a brilliant kid. Mm. It's going to reach a point where he's not going to want to live like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Okay. So I said, okay, Sean, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. And as soon as I'd said that, I was ringing wet. I was sweating. It was like, a, you know, a compose yourself, Byron. You know, that. I can and imagine. Then I, I got it back together again. I said, okay, this is what we're doing. I'm put a bucket under your, between your legs mm. because uh, this is affecting the brain stem where all the respiratory centers, vomiting centers, heart rate, all that stuff is down there. So I'm going to oh. put this bucket between his legs because he probably is going to throw up. And so I do this, set him out, do this procedure, perfect. And I think the parents almost passed out because they thought for sure I'd kill their kid. As soon as I did this, this kid went knocked out. Completely knocked out. Completely knocked out. And in about three seconds, he goes like this. Hmm. And he's looking around and like he just came into the world or something. And he's, he starts looking at it. He's like he's the only person in the Super Bowl. And he's in the middle. Everybody's watching him, but he doesn't know anybody's around. He's, he's into his, this thing. 
he's looking at his fingers and mm. looking at the poster on the wall and looking at the floor and he turns to his dad and says, Dad, I can see all the lines on my hand and I can read all this small print on this poster and the room is so loud because he had 50% hearing loss because there's surgeries in this problem, okay? Right. So we got her fixed up, got a belt around her and I... We got got her back to the helipad just as the helicopter was coming down. Yeah. And the the, the helicopter pilot, he's like, well, that's not the same person. I mean, but he, they get in, they go out, they call me the next day, and said, Doc, we got up, and Sean wasn't around. He's not in his bed. We walked down the beach trying to find him, nowhere. And there's somebody swimming out in the lagoon, but he doesn't know how to swim. He's never swam in his life, so we we knew that couldn't be him. But they walked back to the the bury. And out walks Sean with a snorkel and mask. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Yeah. Hey, but we'll be back shortly on <laughs> Speak Your Mind. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Stay with us. Back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. I hope you're enjoying the program. And uh, we've got chiropractor, Dr. By Byron Cragen, who uh, just told us before this uh, how he managed to help uh, a young boy, you know, live normally. And uh, what a risk you took, Dr. Mm. Byron. I mean, <laughs> imagine uh, just applying that. Like you said, you, you had a 12-year-old son, so it must have been uh, very mm. emotional, and you just thought, I am going to do it. Mm. So the boy is fine. Yeah, well, that, that, that's the next point. They called me the next day. Sean was swimming, slept all night. Stop. First night they'd ever slept all night. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they were just completely blown away. Okay, he, I just want to ask you, what do you think uh, cured him? I mean, the way that you actually placed, you know, his bones and everything in place in his neck. Mm. Uh, so, like you said, this place has, uh, you know, it controls okay. stuff in the body. You well, know? The, this is the most richly innervated part of our body, the upper neck. You know, it's, it's it's really important. And there's an artery that goes up the side called vertebral artery, and it comes together in the back as the basilar artery and goes into the brain and supplies the visual cortex, mm. all the inner ear, so it's going to affect something, okay? Mm. But the, the pain part is when the pressure is on these nerves, information goes into an area that tells you you have pain here. You might not have pain here, but this is telling you you do. Yes. So you have to, to completely realign that. So this, this kid, he learned how to swim, taught himself how to swim, and they came back to see me at the Sheraton, and then they took off back. And they called me about n nine months later. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, it was really nice. And, mm. uh, and they said, listen, you know, I want to tell you, Sean's a straight-A student. He never missed a day of school. He used to miss 70 80%. He couldn't go to school. And he he's sleeps normally, and he's on the soccer team. Wow, I mean, imagine yeah. how you felt. It's so That's the happy. best part, Dad, doing hitters, you know. Oh, just, man, so <laughs> doing hitters. Yeah. Yes. So, oh. so, so I'm sure I'll hear from him again one day, you know. Oh, I mean, yeah. that must have been so rewarding oh, for you. Oh, yeah, it was, the, it was the, you know, chiropractors, they all have some outrageous thing happen to them. Mm. All the time, but it's never reported. Nobody ever talks about it. One time in Australia, some little kid came, bent over his back, couldn't even walk at a 90 degree angle, and he walks right. out. And th these are stories every once in a while that leak out. I have seen one, a really good one, too, a chiropractor yeah. with a, a little boy. I mean, he was like hunched right yeah, yeah. over, and this chiropractor cured him. Yeah, and how can you keep that from people? Yeah, how can you? I mean, what, because what, some what, doctors, they don't like to recognize What's going on here? Yeah. Are you stupid? Mm. <laughs> you know, you know. I mean, look at. You know, I got you one more story that, we'll, we'll, I'll finish with that one. Yeah, we have to finish with the main story. Yeah, there, there was this, this this college student, university student. He was a serious student, wanted to be a surgeon, head and neck surgeon, and he. And so what he 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 was had a summer job, and the summer job was hard work, but in the United States, mm. they usually pay more if you work hard. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was in this, working in the slaughterhouse, and he was they load beef trucks, and they they have a hook with a quarter of beef, 150 mm. to 200 pounds of beef, and you, they would 
hook their arm underneath, put it on the shoulder, and walk it into the truck, and put it on another hook, and walk back. It's just like a conveyor belt, right? Well, one night they, were, they had some big ones, and like I guess there were 200 pounders, and this guy was loaded, getting walking towards the truck, and he slipped on some fat, and down he went with this 200 pounds on his Ooh. back, and you could hear the, the, the I guess the bones crunching in his where his ribs attached to the spine and just ripped the ligaments and tore his shoulder ligament completely off and popped his clavicle out and oh. bent his neck off to the side. You know, so he's really Ooh, bad pick, fall, very they bad. Pick fall. this thing up and get him off and take him to the hospital and they, they do all the studies, nothing's broken, the spine's not broken, it's just, and he they reset his uh, clavicle, but this one is something else. Mm. And he um, he said, well, you know, they sent him to the physio, but that he didn't feel like that was adequate for him, so he stopped going. Mm. And he said, I guess you don't have to learn to live with that. Is that what? You learn to live with the discomfort. You have a, your hands numb. Right. You what wake can up, you do? It was yeah, there's like somebody it. stabbing the back all the time where the ribs were out of place, and, you know, oh. your neck is tight. But, you know, he's a uh, tough do? kid, you know. Mm. What do you do? And so, but this went on. He had time. Eventually, he started having problems with sleeping. And then he started having headaches. That was after the third year. And once a week, then twice a week, and then they got to be migraine headaches. He's vomiting, and, he's, and he can't study anymore. And he's realizing that maybe his studies, his career is over because he can't. And study. he's a science student. Yeah, and he's got, <laughs> he's got his acceptance into USC. School of Dental and Medical Surgery is the best one in the world at the time, and That's he got a and, yeah, and he can't go. He knows he can't go. What, what, what am I? What is he going to do? Going to sit in the class and look at a paper? <laughs> I mean, so it actually almost so, ruined uh, his yeah, life. Yeah, so, so somebody told him, "Why don't you go to this doctor?" And well, he went to this doctor, and it turned out to be a chiropractor. He didn't know what a chiropractor was. This is getting to the point of us in Fiji and anywhere else. Okay. Uh, uh, he didn't know what a chiropractor was, and he's a pre-med student. You know, how come he didn't know? Mm. Well, obviously, that doesn't mean you know anything. It's because you're a student. Mm. You don't know anything, actually. So <clears throat> this doctor, he looked at him and did the x-rays, and he was impressed with this guy because he was telling him things that he made, made sense to him. And he said, well, I'm going to have to realign your upper neck because it's really out of place. Okay? And he did that. And How did it feel? <laughs> and I'm the noise, the the story noise was so big, it didn't hurt at all. Okay. But this guy sat there, the student, mm. for about 30 seconds in dead silence. He opens his eyes and he says, Doc, I don't think I've ever felt this good in my life. Instant, you could feel yeah. that a and boy could feel, you know, it was good. Yeah, because... He knew somebody could fix him, one, and then he did really feel good, really, really good. I mean, and he so said fast. to him, why wasn't I sent to you three years ago? And he was told, the other doctors don't believe in my form of medicine. Okay? Yeah. So we've got that guy, which happens to be me. There you go. We okay. revealed the secret so, to the story. Yeah. Yeah. You're so telling you're your story. So I'm dealing with these headaches and these people, these kids with these injuries. So I've got a personal experience that goes way past. And you know. that's amazing. So yes. I mean, that's how you wanted to. And be I a never had another headache after that. <gasps> One treatment. Now, I'm not saying that that's... So how old were you then, Dr. I, I was Reagan? about 24. Okay. Yeah, I, that, that, it, but I had two more years of treatment for my injury, and it took me that long to recover from all the damage that was done because it was left that's so cool. long. Oh, right. But today, I have no problems at all. No, right. Not at all. Amazing. So, where, so, I mean, goodness me, uh, it is something else, true. Mm. So if uh, a chiropractor, just say, for instance, you wanted to align my bones, uh, would you? Would I have to be relaxed, I, I'm sure? Well, yeah, well, I mean, because I'd be scared. You know, I'd, be, I'd tensed up my body oh, if uh, we ha we a have chiropractor a had to click we my bones. We have a way of calming you down.
It's, uh, like, okay. it's like when I get a child in there. Usually I see children that have chronic sinus problems. That's the, what I usually see. Well, so you can even um, do yeah. deal with sinus. But hey, hey, sorry, yeah. we'll have to talk more soon okay. on uh, Speak Your Mind Gold FM, only the classic hits. Mm -hmm. I hope you're enjoying the program, and thank you a lot for your company. Speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. And uh, we shall talk to our friend again, chiropractor, Dr. Byron Cregan, who has been telling us amazing things about what mm -hmm. he's done. And uh, I mean, your personal experience, that's something else. So uh, like um, we talk about uh, chiropractors, I was saying, you know, you've got, uh, you were saying you chiropractors have a way of getting people to relax mm -hmm. before you actually align their bones. Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you have to do that because some people, they don't they know. Tense up, eh? Yeah, some people have been, oh, uh, you know, my doctor told me never to go to see you because, you know, I might hurt you. You're not a real doctor. And I said, well, let's see about that, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. but uh, on children and sinuses, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Okay. It's, a, it's a beautiful thing when you because you see kids suffering from sinus problems. Their nose are blocked oh, up. Oh, that's it, the worst. It's a poor little guy, man. They're, they're missing school. They can't play. And this old Swiss doctor that taught me this move, he showed me how to treat. It's a special move for treating sinuses. And anatomically, I know what it is. I'm not going to explain it to you. It's about visceral and uh, neuroskeletons and all that stuff. It's a specific area that you have to, to work on. Mm. And when you release this, because they might have hurt their neck, they might have had a birth trauma, they might have done anything, but they, they don't complain about neck problems because it's not really bothering them, but they have a problem. And so they develop sinus problems because these this certain area of the neck controls the blood flow. The nerves control the blood flow into those areas, so they get chronically congested. And if you do it correctly, you isolate that one spot and you play with the child. You know, let them know that you know, little games and this is going to happen. and you make this move, and they're not sure whether they're afraid or not because they just heard their neck click. <laughs> and they look at their mom or dad and said, Mom, I can breathe out of my nose. Mm, Open, okay. just like that. So, I mean, you can even cure sinus? Yeah, yeah in this, this cases that you can, yeah. Mm. It, and you want, I said, tell the kid, you want me to do the other side too? Right. Okay, you know, and he's happy there. So, and that's the last time they need to see anybody for sinus problems. Right. You know, take the pebble out of the shoe, mm. you know, <laughs> if your problems are going to go away. Right. So, go ahead. So, uh, yeah, like um, you were saying, okay, sinus, so what, other, what other stuff that a chiropractor can cure? Yeah, let, let's, well, it's not the chiropractor. Or attempt to cure. Chiro 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 chiropractor can't cure it. Medical doctors can't cure it, but we need to know what to do for the body so the body can do it. Okay. And those things are, um, you know, look at vitamin C deficiency, mineral and vi nutrients, uh, cancer. Why are you having these diseases? It's not the doctor curing it. It's you giving that person the right stuff and the body will, ah, oh, thanks a lot. You right, know? that kicks off all the yeah, um, good, yeah. good stuff happening after. And, and when, you, when you see people that uh, do a certain vitamin regime, and take their vitamin C religiously, and the cause for the heart disease goes away because the arteries are healed. Because the vitamin C has healed it. So how it, much would you recommend a day well, of vitamin it, it, C? It depends on the condition of the person. I, I've seen people that have 80% blockage of their arteries, and I would have them taking uh, 5 grams of vitamin C in a liter of water three times a day. So the vitamin C is constantly in their system. Right. Repairing the artery wall. Wow. And when the artery wall is repaired, the body doesn't need the plaque and stuff. So it'll start to release it or at least stop it from progressing mm. because the fat and cholesterol is only there because it's been requested by an inflamed artery. The inflamed artery, we all know in medicine that heart disease starts with inflammation, our inflammation of the artery. And that inflammatory process sends a message to the liver. We call it a cytokine. And the liver is requested to make some bad cholesterol. So it makes bad cholesterol, sends it to the crack in the artery, and it seals it up year after year after year after year until you, you know, got to have a bypass surgery. 
So you don't even need to have that if uh, you well, take vitamin C Well, if you're C lucky, properly. you know, I can't say that over the air because people say, oh, he said he, said he could cure heart disease, you know. And you've got all <laughs> right, kinds of right. idiots out there that are going to take this. In a negative way. This whole thing offensively. Oh, okay. Because I'm a chiropractor. Oh. And they, they, it's like, like Martin Luther King. He's just trying to get equality. And some people don't want him to have that. You get that in medicine, it's ugly. Because you're not a race or creed or nationality or whatever. You're just a human being. <laughs> and the pharmaceutical industry, it's always money over life. Look, they'd lose a trillion dollars a year in profit if a Nobel Prize was given to Dr. Rath for his discovery of a cure for heart disease. He printed this beautiful paper, The Unified Theory of Cardiovascular Disease in Human Beings. You know? And, and then he proved it, mm. and he still didn't get even nominated for the Nobel Prize. I'm sorry, something's going. And if you were the Nobel, suspicious. If, if you were the pharmaceutical industry, what would you do if a trillion dollar year profit was threatened? You'd do anything. You think Wait. the you think the Nobel Prize committee is beyond that? I'm sorry, man. Give them a trillion dollars because you're going to make the trillion dollars every year after that anyway. Don't let that message get to the world. Well, I'm telling the people of Fiji, right. the medical doctors, the nurses, everybody. If you don't believe me, look up this stuff. Come on, get off your butt and do some research and try and prove me wrong. I, I love it, man. Uh, why would I lie to you? What do I have to learn? Well, I don't have anything to gain from this. I got nothing. I'm kind of retired, so what, what, what's the deal? <laughs> and uh, just one thing, you're the only chiropractor in Fiji. You know, we're very lucky to have you and, uh, you know, telling us all this so that we yeah. can be more healthy people. Yeah, 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 I'm the only one in the phone book, so for the last 15, 20 years, the, mm. so it's not hard <laughs> to find me if you want to find a chiropractor. You know, there's not a whole bunch of them running around. I mean, around. the thing is, too, like with Fiji, like, we have diabetes, the highest deaths oh in the God. world. We've got uh, the problem of non-communicable diseases. You know, we've had all these news stories about how policemen have been dying because of non-communicable diseases. Yeah. So, yes, give us a message. Uh, enlighten us with oh, okay. uh, a that, more healthy future. I, it's such a big subject. I, I don't know. I, I probably should talk about diabetes uh, because it's connected with everything heart disease, cancer, it doesn't matter what it is. Diabetes is connected with all those things. And there was a time uh, where the Sugar Asso uh, uh, Association of the United States was doing a study on heart disease. They wanted to find out whether it was uh, sugar or fat. Well, fat seemed to be getting the limelight, but they found out it was sugar. It was connected with all these diseases. So they kind of put themselves aside and put pushed the fat industry up into it, fat and, and cholesterol and fat was never, never is, never was, never will be the cause of heart disease. But sugar is connected to all these diseases. And, and we think diabetes is a chronic, progressive disease. Everybody get used to it, okay? You have got to live with it. You got to live with it. You know, there's nothing that is, couldn't be further from the truth. Now, Who's going to object to me giving a story on diabetes on this radio station next time? I say, if they do, they should go to prison. Because you deserve to know these things. And where are you going to get them? You don't know how to look up. You don't have, you have uh, the brilliant medical doctors. They're conditioned. They're lovely people. But they believe what they believe because they've been taught and educated completely comprehensively by the pharmaceutical investment business who writes their books, controls the information, controls the hospitals, controls governments, controls the Center for Disease Control, the Food and Drug Administration. They control everything. And you're a smart guy. You don't want to believe that somebody's lied to you. I'm the, I was the same way. I started discovering, wait a second, this, that's not true at all. And now, oh, one of my favorite sayings of all time is Mark Twain's. It's easier to fool a person than to convince him that he's been fooled. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, man. It, Thank it, you it so much, Dr. Byron. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. And uh, 
maybe just something very quickly that you'd like to share to the public of keeping themselves healthy in your eyes. Well, let's stay away from all processed foods. MSG is the worst thing you could stick in you. And if you go into a Chinese restaurant, tell them to leave it out. Ginseng, they call it something No, Chinese. MSG, monosodium, yeah, yeah. good. They call yeah. it Chinese salt. Yeah, Chinese Stay salt. away from artificial sweeteners, Diet Cokes and all that stuff. It's not good for you. Okay. It might taste less, but, yeah, but it makes you gain weight. And you're, you're drinking it because you want to curb your appetite. Okay. And it's, it's stay away from, oh, as many drugs as you can, of course. <laughs> But uh, the thing on, on that we'll talk about next time, if I'm given this opportunity, we'll talk about diabetes and how you can do something. And I'll give you the information where you could look it up because many, many doctors don't believe, but they're finding out really quickly. And if you're, if I was a medical doctor, I, I man, I'm, I'm on it, man. I want to find out as much as I can because I don't care about the pharmaceutical industry. I care about my patients. Right. I mean, isn't that uh, a sort of a, a, a uh, vow that you make if you're a doctor for yeah. your patients? Do no harm, man. Yes. Do no harm. And I'll leave, th leave it with this one statement. Okay. The, media, the, the, the media really is in control. Okay. Donald Trump appointed, his first appointment, he appointed Robert F. Kennedy Jr., get this, mm. to investigate the fraud in the vaccination industry. Now you get the impact of that, okay? Right. And he didn't get any credit, nobody found out. The media wouldn't release this because it's controlled by the people that are doing the fraud. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said, I did the study, and he says, I, I've done EPA environmental studies and these crooks, these guys are polluting the world. Fraud, but I didn't expect to find the fraud in the industry that's supposed to protect our children. And CBS, NBC, his friends there, he's got friends everywhere. They wanted to have him on to tell his story, but he said, I'd lose my job. And they might have to close down the station because we depend on these people for the income to run the station and all the things, advertising and promotion. So but there you go. Yay, Donald Trump. Oh, dear. <laughs> Awful. Oh, dear. Many thanks anyway, Dr. Okay. Cragen, for coming in today, okay. and uh, we look forward to talking to okay. you next time on Speak Your Mind. I hope you enjoyed the program. Until next week, you take care. Nisa Mwademanda.